Here we are at Willow Springs International Raceway. We have the new 2020 Shelby GT500 and the new C8 Corvette. Today we're going to find out which one is going to be the better track car for your average track enthusiast. Which one's going to be easier to drive fast and just more fun. I know you're thinking this comparison is kind of crazy because one car is front engine, the other one is mid engine, one is supercharged with 760 horsepower, the other one is naturally aspirated with 495. They couldn't be any more different, right? However, think of it this way. I paid $82,000 for my C8 Corvette and I paid $81,000 for my 2020 GT500 so technically they are priced very similarly and also I've had so many people reaching out to me asking me hey I'm in the market for a new high performance vehicle which one should I buy the new GT500 or the first ever mid-engine Corvette that's a hard choice so here's the deal I want to show you guys how these two cars perform and compare on the racetrack for your average track enthusiast now in the next video I'll show you hot laps with both cars to show you which one is truly faster but in this episode I want to truly break down the handling characteristics and also my first impressions from tracking these two cars at Willow Springs Raceway for the very first time. Right away let's start off with the new GT500. I'll be completely honest with you guys I'm used to front engine rear wheel drive vehicles. I have always raced front engine vehicles and even personally I track my Shelby's which again are front engine rear wheel drive. In particular I'm very used to the S550 platform. I've I've tracked the GT350 so many times now, dozens of times, and the GT500 takes what the 350 is and brings it to the next level. The same handling, but with way more horsepower, hundreds of more horsepower. I wasn't sure what to expect because for the first time ever, I had a DCT. Anyways, on track, on the front straightaway, we're climbing all the way past 150 miles an hour. That's insane, that's supercar territory. And we're in a Shelby Mustang. Now here's where it gets interesting. The brakes. This new GT500 has 16 and a half inch brakes up front. And there's a reason why the GT500 needs such big brakes. The car itself is on the heavier side. So with the driver in the car, you're looking at way past 4,200 pounds total. And that is why the brakes in this new Shelby are 16 and a half inches. They are powerful. I mean, the bite, the instantaneous bite is insane. The entire car lunges forward. You even feel like you're going up in the air in your driver's seat because the hood goes straight down. The bite is always there and it's always usually right away. Here comes my complaint. Now, getting on the brakes with the Shelby, I don't feel as in tune with them as I were with the GT350s. That being, I have a hard time modulating the brake pressure because the bite, it's just so powerful. For turn one, I don't want to slow down too much, but sometimes I find myself doing so. Anyway, slowing down for turn one, we're easily holding 80 miles an hour, which is very good for a car with PS4 tires. And this is where the GT500 destroys all cars in its class. The brutal acceleration force out of a corner. So going from turn one to turn two, it's like nothing. It's like, boom, I'm already there. Coming to turn two, this is another interesting corner. Just slightly brush the brake just to get the grip on the front end to turn in. The idea with turn two is that you want to hold at least 80 plus miles an hour through it. Um, some cars can go 90 plus. So the Shelby GT 350R I have, I can easily hold 90 through this corner. With this GT 500, I'm not able to. And I think it's because of the tires again, the PS4 tires. As I mentioned earlier, the front end grip is always there. However, the back end grip, that's what to worry about. Because once I start climbing higher and higher into the speeds, I find that the tail end starts to slip out from under me. Now in track mode, which is the mode I'm always driving in, it turns off traction control to a slight extent. Personally, I feel like the base model needs a bit more downforce in the rear to keep that tail end planted in these more sticky tires. Now let's move into the next point. Trailer braking really allows the car to turn in hard. So going through turn three and four, the car, it corners flat out and fast. It feels planted. However, on turn four, I don't feel like I can carry as much speed as I can with other cars. That being, you can feel how the car weighs 4,200 pounds. During the slow corners, the slow speed corners, that's when it really hits you, I think. The one aspect that always makes itself apparent with this new Shelby is the front end grip. Now, let's say you're taking the corner too fast or you're going too wide and you're going to miss the apex. You can easily tap the brake and rotate the car a bit more. Like I've said numerous times, this vehicle loves to rotate into corners. If you have fresh 
fresh tires, getting on throttle, it couldn't be any easier. You can go full throttle down this hill with 760 horsepower and it puts down the power. As long as you track out, you're golden. Going all the way down to turn five, this is a good test for the brakes again. It gets a bit slick down here. Going downhill, I have a harder time getting the car to um, stay tame. And climbing six where the hump is, this is where it gets a bit sketchy because you're going 90 or so miles an hour on the top of the hump where the crest is. And if you maintain full throttle, you can easily find yourself off the racetrack. So for most cars that are higher horsepower, you may want to let off on the throttle a tiny bit until you finish and go past that hump, the top of the hill for turn six. Anyways, back in the next straightaway, you find that horsepower easily just pushing the GT500 insanely quickly. And here we are to turn eight. Now, this is where I want you to focus. Focus really hard on the suspension of the GT500. You'll notice these bumps and rivets on the ground. Now, during this section of the track, it gets extremely bumpy. And I think it's a good place in the track to understand the handling characteristics of each car, how they are composed. Now, the base model GT500, I found myself flying all over the place. The suspension is not as dialed in as the GT350R. I feel like the base model GT500 is more in tuned for the street. Now the steering and track mode, it's pretty light compared to other cars out there. So you see my steering get affected because I'm flying all over my seat. It really throws off the balance of the car. From what I'm told, the track pack will fix this issue. And then back in the straightaway, you're accelerating all the way back up to 150 miles an hour. Overall, how can I summarize this new GT500 as a track car? It really hits you once you start going lap after lap. So the GT500 is without a doubt the most expensive track car I have ever owned. Now, after a full session, I've almost used a full tank of gas. So on a track day, you're spending a lot of time at the gas pump. And I'll be blunt, the GT500 is not an easy car to drive fast. It's not. It's a vehicle that you need to build the confidence with, at least the base model is. And once the tires get too hot, or once they start getting bald, the vehicle just wants to kick out from under you. You're constantly battling to put that power down to the ground. The front end grip is great, but it's just tail wants to go all over the place. That's what I'm noticing. So it, it can rotate. It rotates very well. But then whenever I get on throttle, see, the tail end wants to go all over the place. But again, this is the base model GT500. Is it more confidence inspiring than Shelby GT350? I would say no. I would 100% say no. Do I still like it? Of course I do. This car is amazing on the racetrack. It is so good. Now let's move on to the C8 Corvette. There's one thing I do want to make very clear with the new C8 Corvette. It feels like a glove. It's like putting on your own glove. It is sitting in it. It's perfect. It honestly is perfect. The seating position couldn't be any better. And the view, the visibility all around you is nailed. You feel like you're sitting in a McLaren 570S or a Lamborghini Huracan. The front windshield is long and almost horizontal. The front end is short. You don't even see the hood. And having that engine right behind you improves that rear grip. When you compare the new C8 Corvette to the GT500, when it comes to downforce, the C8 actually has the handling package GT500 beat. The C8 is rated at four and a pounds of downforce and the GT500 with the handling package, that includes the gurney flap and the front splitter wickers, is rated at 379. Now, considering that the C8 is lighter as well, you'll understand how it has more grip. Getting on track for the first time ever, I made sure to put the car in race mode, which is a sub setting under track mode. This setting turns off all your traction control. I wanted to do this because I wanted to try to get a good feel for the car itself. What is it like when it kicks out from under you? Is it easy to handle, to control, to catch? So that's what I did. Now, here we go. Here's a lap in the new C8 Corvette. On the main front stretch, we're climbing to 140 miles an hour and coming to the brakes. Now, I heard a lot of um, complaints online about the brakes being electronic, but even though they are brake by wire, they still work very well. The brake bite was easy to modulate, very easy. I found myself braking later and later. My confidence was always there. I was never worried about slowing this car down. I felt in tune with the brakes. That being based on feel, I could easily slow down the car and get myself set up perfectly for turn one. Now for turn one, we're holding 80 plus miles an hour, which is awesome. I'm beyond impressed with that. This is the base model Corvette. It has PS4 tires. Well, you know, it's backtracked. It's not the base model. This is the Z51 package, the highest uh, performing variant of the new C8 Corvette. But anyways, it just felt 
felt so planted. It gives you pure confidence. Driving the car, it feels like a go-kart because turning into turn one, you notice that right behind you, that tail end, it's not going anywhere. So unlike the new Shelby, I'm not worried about the car sliding out from under me. The tail end of the GT500 feels pretty light. Well, this car, it doesn't. For the straightaway between turn one and turn two, the CA Corvette still accelerates pretty quickly. We're getting up to 110 miles an hour. Just give it a slight brush of the brake, the car easily turns in. I don't notice any understeer whatsoever in this portion of the track. And through turn two, the car is fantastic. Originally, I was starting out at roughly mid 80s through this corner. And after each lap, my confidence just kept rapidly climbing. Next thing I knew, I'm holding 90 plus miles an hour through turn two. That is phenomenal. I'm not, I'm not kidding. 90 plus miles an hour with this car for having PS4 tires. Without a doubt, the CA Corvette corners harder and faster than the base model GT500, from my experience at least. It's much easier to corner this car fast. The mechanical grip is amazing, that's because the center of gravity is so low and it's right behind you that the car just hugs the corners. What cars can hold 90 plus miles an hour in turn two? Well, the 720S does that, the ZR1 does that, the GT2 RS does that. That is top tier territory. Exiting turn two, I feel the downforce working with the new CA Corvette. I feel the engine behind me. So I'm able to get on the throttle very early and track all the way out and then get set up for turn three. Right before the braking zone on turn three, we're hitting almost the same speed as a GT500. We're only a few miles an hour off. Now here's where it gets interesting. You do notice tires squeal because of the ABS kicking in. My first time out, I was caught off guard. I thought to myself, oh my gosh, are the brakes locking up or something? However, even though I was hearing the tires screech and even the ABS kicked in a slight amount, the car still stopped on a dime. As long as you thresh threshold brake right before the ABS kicks in, it stops so good. And getting used to it, the learning curve is not too steep. Another thing that was interesting, trail braking really helped to uh, rotate the CA Corvette into turn three. Now in turn four, sometimes if my line was off, I found the car was understeering and pushing me outwards. Now obviously you can easily fix this. Getting back on throttle, the car just puts down the power because the engine's right behind you. That burst, you can go full throttle from turn four to five, get up to 90 plus miles an hour, get hard on the brakes again, turn in the car for turn five. Climbing up to six, we're hitting the same speed as we're hitting with the new Shelby. The CA Corvette cars the corners and the Shelby obliterates the straights. That is why they are so close to each other at these points. Barely letting off in the throttle just a tiny bit and the car maintains a lot of speed through turn six through that hump and then we're on the straightaway again heading to turn seven and turn eight. Remember how we were talking about how the new Shelby GT500 was so bumpy on turn eight? Look how smooth and tame the C8 is right here. My steering wheel is barely moving. The car is soaking up every single bump and it feels extremely planted. I personally find that the suspension in track mode with the C8 Corvette, it's able to handle these bumps better than the Shelby. As a result, we're carrying more speed. Driving the C8 Corvette and the new GT500 back to back, you also notice that the steering feel with the Corvette is way heavier. And I mean, it's way heavier. And I find that this heavier steering feel is keeping my steering inputs to a bare minimum. Overall, with the new Corvette, it's a much more approachable car to drive fast. When it kicks loose from under you, though, it's not as forgiving as the Shelby. Since the Shelby is your traditional front engine rear wheel drive layout, it's much easier to catch and maintain control of. Being mid engine now, it's something that you need to get used to. Being naturally aspirated and being as light as it is, the car feels balanced. Thinking about it, it is a very different experience than the new GT500. The GT500 is brute force. The new CEA is like a precision instrument. Now the following is gonna be a side-by-side -side lap between the CEA and the GT500. Now keep in mind, these were not the fast laps. These were just, I chose these laps because the lap times were just so similar to each other. And I wanted to show you how the new GT500 conquers these laps compared to the CEA. The different methods being used.
enjoyed this video of how these two cars compare when it comes to the handling on the racetrack for your average track enthusiast. The C8 is a more approachable car to drive fast. The GT500 is the kind of vehicle that if you're skilled, you can get inside of and put down some crazy fast lap times. Stay tuned for part two, which is gonna be a much more slimmed down version of this. That being it showing the hot lap times, which one is the faster car at Willow Springs. If you did like this in-depth style of video, please give me a thumbs up and also let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure to subscribe for much more great GT500 and C8 Corvette content coming your way. Thanks for watching again and I'll see all of you in the next episode. <laughs>